right, hey everybody. Welcome back mm. to Sunday Tea Book. We're rocking and rolling. And hello, Josh. You were a little bit early, I think. Already got some comments up there. Looks like you're brewing a delicious. Oh, Anzi Bai Cha. Nice. Very nice. Nice. And we're going to brew some uh, 2008 uh, Lao Shu Shen Pu. Mm. Means old tree. Show that bad boy to him. Another, another fantastic cooling tea. It's sweltering mm. hot up here. Like, I don't know what it is with the Humidex, but uh, this is a great cooling tea. Shempuar, Angie Bai Cha, green teas. Uh, Shempuar, good for cooling. White tea, good for cooling for on these hot, hot days. So that is part of what I kind of predicted this would be a hot day. Three weeks ago when we selected <laughs> the tea. We're trying to stick with those cool teas. Right. Hello, HR Holiday as well. Let me break some of this up. We're just getting started here. I have my pro uh, tea breaker. Pro tea breaker with my uh, trusty tea knife. And uh, can they see? No, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of off cam for this, but safety first. I can't, I can't do this in the air. So mm. we're just going to break off an amount. We're not going to wing yes. it. If you have a really tough pour, like a really, uh, mm. uh, like a, a pressed, really, uh, mm. how should I say, really. Pressed, yeah, really, pressed. really tightly pressed. Tightly pressed. Yeah. Yeah, tightly mm -hmm. pressed. Um, we made a video a while ago mm -hmm. uh, showing how to uh, break those uh, cakes or brick or tour safely. Mm -hmm. The whole world is shaking because you're breaking. Yeah, sorry, world. <laughs> uh, hang on to something firm. I'm breaking some sh shampooar. Luckily, this one's not too tough at all. Mm -hmm. Very easy. I think that's a good amount. I think so. I think it's in the four to five gram range. We're not going to weigh it today. Yes. So there's the dry leaf, folks. This is that? a real stunner of a tea, too. Mm. I'm going to put this gently down. I, uh, I still remember at the um, one year we brewed this at Toronto Tea Fest mm. and just everybody taste, taste and grab that. Taste and yeah, grab yeah. that. The really nice uh, aged shampooar and um, is getting better and better, darkening down a bit. Yeah. And we have our favorite uh, pour cups. Those are um, uh, wood fire, wood fire, right. kil kiln fire, wood kiln, <laughs> wood kiln fired clay, I yes. think. And the the reason that makes them kind of special is these patterns inside. Mm -hmm. Inside, are, um, including outside, uh, all yeah, the, the glaze. All the glaze is kind of affected by that, and they're unique, right? Mm, because of how the ashes uh, falls on mm. the stuff. Mm, cool. So, um, yeah. Oh, got some company. Hey. <laughs> Josh said I look like a rock star. <laughs> Literally, especially <laughs> with the necklace. Yeah, I thought that was yin yang. <laughs> yeah, should we got the little yin yang uh, themed themed uh, necklace, themed collar. Um, so thank you for that. I thought you yeah. looked quite rock starish too. Um, <laughs> I'm looking a little bit more tame today. I don't know. I tried to do my hair, but it went really back. really summer theme. It went back to nerd. Yeah, I've got the manta rays going. <laughs> and JS, welcome. Uh, we're doing great. How's it going? Did you get a tornado Ooh. warning? No. No, we did not. Uh, and hopefully we don't get one in heat the middle of the video. Only. Yeah, we got heat warnings. And some lapsang. Very oh, nice. nice. Love me some lapsang. Mm, I haven't drank lapsang for a while. Mm, yeah, we should have that again soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a black tea on deck. On deck means it's in our to drink drawer. So we, I'm pretty sure we got a black tea on deck, but it's not Lapsong. We got to have some of that soon. Mm. So and HR Holiday is like 100 F outside. Oh, that's really hot. That's yes. really hot. Fifth or oh, 60 humidity, but I'm a hotel where it's a bit chilly. Oh, that's really hot. Yeah, that's super hot. Something around that here, I think, just under. I don't know what the translation is. I feel like a ninety something. Was I'm going to get Josh to do that. Josh, can you get a hundred F and C, please? Thank you. Because <laughs> he always does the Google while we're doing our stuff, oh, right? True, true. So I just just gonna. We cannot say hello Google. No, yeah, yeah, I can't say okay Google. Google's busy uh, streaming to Instagram. <laughs> All right, so guys, episode three, Sunday mm. Tea Book. Um, mm -hmm. Super excited to get this rolling. I'll do talk a little bit about what Sunday Tea Book is and what's going on here. So I'm brewing this. Tea. Yeah, we'll get brewing for anybody that's new. And um, so basically, Sunday Tea Book is where we review books, articles, or papers that um, are written in Chinese and are typically quite hard, um, quite hard to access, but full of great information. Um, they may or may not have already been translated, but one way or the other, the translation is uh, confusing or maybe um, 
uh, incomplete somehow, so we're going to address stuff like that here, mm. here on Sunday Tebow. We've got the live going on YouTube. We've got the live going on Instagram just for this introduction. Because we're going to have the book going along, we're going to actually show you the book on YouTube. We can't do that on Instagram. I feel we'll be highlighting those important. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be highlighting important things on the uh, subtle cues from my directress. Um, so, uh, but because of that, we cannot stay, we can't do the whole thing on Instagram live. So if you're on Instagram and if you are interested in checking this out, um, hey, cha holiday tea for me and you and anybody else out there in Instagram land, pop on over to our YouTube channel. I believe there's still a link to a YouTube video up in the Instagram profile, which will kind of get you in the zone. Right. And then you should be able to find us. All right. Um, and for comments, okay, on the YouTube side, if you have questions, please don't hesitate. Hit us up with any questions you have about the uh, translation as we go through. But we're only going to stop and address them sort of at the end of each section to keep the flow going. So try to make it as detailed as possible since there might be other stuff uh, coming up in that section that might make it hard for us to figure out which area you were talking about. Um, yeah, so one other thing though about doing these translations live that I always love to emphasize is, you know, four or five years ago, I'm a complete newbie to tea. And I've been working with Jen, uh, here with Jen T, and just all the little information I, I've gained just by going over things with her. I feel like if you read a really well translated book, that's great, you get some great information. But by going through the process of understanding why did, why was it written this way in Chinese and what do those what are the implications the cultural implications of all these things super super rich information i think it's a great learning experience for those that want to really take your tea knowledge your chinese tea knowledge to the next level all right tea time mm. thank you how is it mm. oh, this has got great right away you've got some dry not sweet plum but some dry plum undertone right away I just mm. like the the mouth feel. So this morning mm. we made a like a, a ru gui shake, right? Mm -mm, bai sui xiang. Oh, bai sui xiang mm. shake mm. and uh, uh, you know our <laughs> morning tea mm. teapot travel. Yeah, like many, brew of, many of our brewing videos you'll see we use that as our teapot because it's yeah. about nine hundred fifty ml. Yeah, that's what we use every morning, but. Uh, uh, because we had a really busy morning, so all we did was just uh, re-top it up, re-top it up. So the last few sip of tea I had was water, like <laughs> <laughs> right, really, because it's a pretty big vessel. Yeah. So I feel really good, like to finally sip some tea that has the most some mouth feel and some yeah. thickness, right? This yeah. definitely has that. Mm. And you can see the liquor color. We'll do a little minute up with the tea here. I'm gonna use my notes, the back of my notes, as the. Uh, just a little paper to give you guys a true you can see that that's getting pretty pretty lovely and deep mm, um, starting to have that red red tone yeah starting to have it's a it seemed a little bit uh excessive on instagram youtube mm. is a little bit laggy so i cannot even yeah. tell you what it's doing there yet but it's sort of a a deep pushing towards amber coming out of gold mm -hmm. almost a almost a copper i would say mm. <laughs> I see the uh, YouTube. Basically, your paper is uh, way above the liquor. <laughs> oh darn! <laughs> Anyways, um, so we choose the book, uh, which is China Tea Book. Just a recap of this is a book by my mom Jian Li, and it's a great book of, to introduce people to Chinese tea. Uh, set the foundation of, uh, you know, uh, the all the basic elements of. Uh, Chinese tea brewing mm -hmm. a little bit of this like today we're gonna talk about uh, a little bit about pluckings mm -hmm. a little bit about mm -hmm. tea plants so and uh, I think this book will be a great uh, service like uh, the great foundation that we reach some um, you know mutual understanding in some tea terms some tea names and for yeah. future yeah. Uh, article or paper readings it would be very uh, smoother smooth right yeah. we've got baselines of language baselines of terminology understanding yes mm. and uh, yeah and so for the format for today and for the China tea book the way we're approaching it because it's already uh, there is a translation in there um, but it's a little bit uh, shaky to say the least 
So what we're going to do is I'm going to read the book as it's written, and then I'm going to go over, I'm going to, I'll read one section, and then I'm going to go over it, and I'm going to comment on stuff that I found um, confusing or hard, pretty hard to understand or that I think would be hard to understand for a, a newcomer to tea, that's where you guys can chime in with any comments or questions you might have about that section. Um, and Jen and I will talk about them and anything that was completely lost, she's reviewed the Chinese side completely and if it was completely dropped out somehow, she'll make sure that we get back at it and mm. don't miss out. Um, at, after the show, uh, the show, is it a show? It's kind of like a Vegas show. No. It's a show. <laughs> <laughs> after the show, Check out the description. We're going to put a link to the complete finished translation, which will be up on the website. And uh, finally, I got to do the YouTube cliche. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click that notify button so that you'll know every time we have a live or post a new video about all kinds of stuff. Tea travel, how to brew, tea culture, all that jazz. Mm. And new, a couple new people on Instagram. We're about to sign off of Instagram, yes, so we're, so we're on YouTube Live if you want to follow along with mm. our Sunday tea book. Okay. Bye-bye, okay. Instagram. Bye-bye, Instagram. I got to do a little Instagram management to get it posted. Perfect. And oh, I was reading next. the <laughs> the uh, comment along. It's 34 in Toronto. Yeah, hot. Wow. Similar here, I think. Today is like a 32, 34, feels like, like 40, something like that. Super hot. It's really humid. We got the AC jacked a little bit. We yeah. don't usually do that, but in the room with the tea and the computers and the streaming yeah. and all that. Oh my God, yeah. 100F is a 37.8. Yeah, that's probably yeah. not even a feels like too. That's probably right. straight up. Right. Yeah, I remember Super that hot. because when we were in Vegas, they are 91, 92 or something. That was pretty hot already. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going to switch us to our, um, our split screen so you guys can see the book. And we are going to get rocking and rolling. Mm -hmm. You want to finish up any comments? Yes. There were quite yes. a few comments. Let's just hit some comments. drinking a certain infusion of a Shen Cha tea. Shen Cha? S H I and where are we at? I don't know where we're at. Oh, Brandon. Hey, Brandon. Uh, drinking a third infusion of uh, Sincha. Oh, Sincha. Japanese. It's a kind of Japanese. It was. I think it looks a little bit like hair. Not hair, but you know, like short and thin. Oh. I think. Yes. Oh, that sounds so good. I'll be back. Got to get a surge protector for my laptop. Oh, okay. Oh my God! Huge lightning strike just close by. Wow! Oh, thunder! We had a big Ooh. thunderstorm last night. Oh, I love those. Whenever I see like a thunderstorm mm. or weird weather, I just want to run out and yeah. watch that. Yeah, that was his next comment. A show of nature and a dark blue green jade color. The sky goes those Ooh, funky boy. colors. Really pretty. Yeah. And um, oh wow! And uh, Brandon also in Toronto said it sounds like the apocalypse. Wow. Okay, cool. So some crazy weather in Toronto. Guys, I hope your power doesn't go out. That would be a bummer. And um, I'm going to get, get rolling with the reading here. Shen Cha, if I recall, is the first plug of Shen Cha green tea of the year. Mm. Oh, okay. Just started raining so hard I can't see out my window. Oh my god, I really hope that weather reached it Ottawa. Should. Af after the live so I can right, run right. out and watch it. And oh. so our power doesn't go out. We had a yes. power outage oh, the true, other day true, too, true, right? True. And lightning. Oh. So today we're covering uh, understanding uh, of leaf tea. And I will get started with section one. Mm -hmm. All right, so understanding of leaf tea. Tea's growing environment and superb craftsmanship complement each other. Good buds, leaves, good bud leaves and good work can make good tea. Understanding of the procedure of picking and making will help us to be familiar with the properties of tea better. In addition, it is necessary to make a cup of tea. All right. Oh, I didn't open my notebook. All right. I might shake the table a little bit. I open my notebook. Mm. Uh, this tea has a pretty strong cha tea for me. Mm. So this intro, pretty understandable, right? Um, basically, it's saying that you need good material, um, good material and good craftsmanship are both required to make tea. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I didn't even note it, but it's a little bit subtle here, but they also, in the very last sentence, a little sort of a hint, 
that um, you also need to understand. It's not clear though because of the way it's said, but it says in addition it is necessary to make a cup of tea. But it sounds mm. like they're referring to the picking and processing. Uh, it means uh, basically mm. if you know a bit about uh, the plucking process, uh, the the tea where it's grown and uh, that's mentioned here, mm. and uh, how it's made, it helps us uh, uh, brew a good cup of tea. Yes. So I'm going to move into tea picking. Maybe then yeah. we'll come back yeah. for uh, yeah. for uh, more. So tea picking. Quote, if you want to pick tea, you'd better come in February, March, or April, end quote. This fully proves that tea's, season, this fully proves that tea's seasonal characteristic. Spring tea picking is normally from the tomb sweeping day to summer begins. Summer tea picking is from grain buds to summer solstice and from great heat to cold dew for picking autumn tea. At present, it is better to pick green tea before the tomb sweeping day and grain rain. Okay, um, this is pretty um, confusing. Right? Okay. I found this, like, I think a newcomer to tea will definitely find this super confusing because of, because of the season, the way the seasons are delineated. Um, uh, so first, the, we start with February, March, and April in quotes, but if you're kind of new to tea, you might be wondering, what is this a quote from? Right? I just noticed that. Why you do the thing is straighten it right oh that's pretty cool so distracting okay. sorry anyway um, but the so the quote is a classic of tea i'm um, i kind of assume that. yes this book has a lot of a quote from classic cla classic of tea classic of tea right, right? yes and uh, this is uh, the quote again from that book and it's uh, basically the beginning of uh, it's the uh, of the classic of tea classic of tea the i think oh, the is the, the classic of tea the chapter three when you talk about making this is the opening sentence there which indicates uh, when tea was plucked and this is actually um, interesting because it's a quote from old times and even though in chinese it says february march and a april the actual time that we understand should be march april and may oh. because uh, you know we use traditional calendar to mark time. Mm. So to translate that in nowadays the common calendar that we use, it's actually usually about a month later. Oh. So this February actually means March now. The second month of oh. the year is our March. It uses the Chinese traditional right, calendar. Right, right. Yeah. Because of the so long ago that it shifted slowly, right? Something like that? Anyway. No, the Chinese calendar, traditional calendar, we still use that, mm. and we will talk more about it when there's the you know grand butts and stuff. Right. All those. There but that calendar is usually one month later than the February, March, April got calendar. Got you. Got you. So, uh, the other thing that threw me off was February, March, and April, and then we go on to talk about summer and autumn, mm -hmm. and tea is seasonal. So once I figure out this is a Lu Yu quote, I can right. kind of figure out, oh, okay, maybe they didn't make autumn and summer tea back then, but it still very was, it was dependent on season then, and it still is dependent on season, and mm. you can't, we'll kind of get into that a bit more. Right. The other main thing, though, were all of these tomb sweeping day, uh, summer begins, I think, is probably the solstice. No. Not even. So see what I mean? Like these ways of marking off. Oh, here's the solstice right here. Call yeah. out normally. The great heat, which I think just passed. Right? No. Not even. Not so, yet. Anyway, so Almost there you go. Did. All I'm doing is showing how tricky it is for someone who does isn't familiar. I don't even know how familiar Chinese are with these. Mm. Probably much better. But we, we have, have no to, idea what these mean. <laughs> Some of them I roughly know. I know the time now, but I don't know the exact date. Right. And uh, year after year, there's a little trend. So all those names are uh, from the 24 solar. Solar lunar calendar? So, yeah, that's a, mm. we have 24 solar turns in a year, which is defined by the angle of the sun and something okay. like, you know, <laughs> you can do Wikipedia, they will have more detail of how they're defined. It's very helpful for farming culture mm. to know when to sow and stuff like that. Like a grand buzz, the translation is a grand buzz, but it kind of means the 
the the grain their buds start to fill up. It means mm. they start. It tells them the season kind of thing. So uh, tomb sweeping. I think most people are like heard of that. That's a Qingming. Qing mm, so, pretty common tea time. Yeah, yeah. Then you uh, so it means spring tea Qingming, which is uh, early April. Li mm. xia, uh, the start of uh, summer. That's what it means, but uh, in Chinese calendar, that's uh, the beginning, beginning of May. Yeah. Li xia, li yeah. Xia. So that means the spring season, uh, spring tea season, uh, usually is from um, uh, April, early April to early May, and uh, summer, summer one is the xiao man. Grand buzz is the xiao man. Xia zhi is the summer solstice. That's about. Uh, let me see my. That's note. one that we share. Because it's really specific to yes. the planet's position. Yes. Right, longest day of the year, basically. Yeah. So the so mm. summer harvest season is late May to late June, and uh, the autumn season is a great heat. I means the hottest time of the year. That's usually late in late. That uh, solar turn is in late July, I think. Yeah, late July. Right. And uh, cold dew, Han Lu, which is early October. So that's the zone for autumn harvest. Right, right. In a lot of like uh, uh, farming, um, like uh, talk about farm and stuff, like people use that as a mark of uh, time, more than the just the cold dew. Uh, all those turns, twenty-four ah. a solar turn uh, has great like importance uh, to the farmers. Right, right, yeah, of course. For, for, for right, China and I think East Asia even. Probably, yeah. And for my fellow Canadians out there, like you'll notice everything's shifted quite a bit forward from what we would consider summer or mm. spring or anything like February. The, the word February and spring, I think for most of us up here in the north is like a little bit of a joke because it's still deep freeze, like really deep freeze. Mm. But obviously that's totally a geographic, uh, it's a geographic thing there. So yeah. those were a little bit hard to pick up, but these are really important um, farm times and tea times. So yeah, so basically, uh, this just tells you the time frame. You know, spring, autumn, summer kind of tea. Right, right. It is. All right, so let's check mm -hmm. out. I saw lots of activity on the chat. So we've got. Um, I always have trouble figuring out where I was. So there's the thunderstorm pot. Back to tea, right? Okay, I have to say, drinking tea in a storm is one of my favorite activities of all time. Yeah, love it. Really love it. Um, and noob. Uh, noob. Noob Noob Kiminal. Noob Kiminal. Hello, welcome to the uh, welcome to the show. Um, and having stream two just puts the icing on the cake flavored bubbles tea. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> Glad I could make it. Makes sense to me. Just not structured as you would in English. Mm, the, the the dates, I guess, right? Um, I guess it makes sense, but I wouldn't be able to put a date to the times. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, that's kind of... So we gave a rough idea of when they are. They're basically the times mm -hmm. there. These specifics may not have made it over here too much, but I think pre -tsing -ming, uh pick tea is fairly known, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, among tea heads on this side. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Tsingming is definitely the most well-known, I would say, yes. of all of these solely lunar terms. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so. Other than maybe the Chinese New Year, which is oh. also a solely lunar, that's a, a even goes outside the tea heads, right? But it is <laughs> yeah. one of them. Am I wrong? Am I right? No, no, not the, not the solar terms. Yo, bad one. Okay, fail. Um, all right. So next section: picking mm. tea on the weather. Weather restricts the tea picking, so we must strictly control the picking time. Picking just on sunny days rather than rainy or cloudy days. The reason is that if there is more rainfall and high temperature, the tea buds will grow older and change its quality, so we must pick the tea in time. However, picking tea only on cloudy days now is being done. Oh, sorry. However, picking tea on cloudy days now is being done, so it is flexible to adapt to the times and environments. All right. So, um, I think that's understandable. Yeah, pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, the reason was a little bit tricky to understand, though. Okay. So why we don't pick on rain? Um, the oh. buds grow old and change um, quality. It's a little bit like uh, makes it kind of made me wonder. Mm. Um, 
And also, it took me a little bit of time to shift gear from the season paragraph. I was a little bit thrown off. Picking tea on the weather, I was, I didn't, it, you finally realize it in the sentence, but now it's talking about the, t the actual time of day and the conditions you're looking for on the day you're actually plucking the tea. And I had a little hint from being in the fields, right? In Taeguan Yin, I remember we had a really rainy day. The rain stopped, the clouds broke about 45 minutes, one, anyway, some period of time later, the people storm up. Like, like it was crazy to see them, like it's really, they know, okay, it just had a good rain, you can't go out right away when the rain stops, but after a certain time, boom, because the rain's coming back, right? So they, every time they can pluck, they're plucking, like crazy. Yes. Like it's really yes. interesting to see. So I knew it yes. was really time sensitive, but it took me a while to figure that out coming out of the season talk. Now we're talking about absolute mm. plucking time. Yeah, you can see the structure here just to say like what we discuss is like an even higher level is the season. Now it's to the days, mm. what are mm. the days? And later on we'll talk about you know more specific techniques and yeah, yeah. What it's do. actually pretty interesting right so here in terms of meaning i think you get the gist of it basically you plug tea in sunny days mm. and uh, yes. cloudy days and stuff i think to emphasize that through the whole uh like this chapters and stuff including the season and stuff those are general guides for general mm. what's happening it's not a meaning as uh, a february or January, there's no place in China that is plugging tea. That's right. not right, yeah. right? Uh, you know, even in Hainan province, they started in December. The climate are still different in place to place. Same with this. Mm. The general, the ideal situation is a sunny day, mm -hmm. you know, or if you want to push that even better, it's yesterday it rained and today is a full sunny. Right. If you are a gardener, you know, that's that's prime, the best. prime leaf. Right, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And because in the tea regions, the climate decides in spring a lot of rain, like they're more rainy. Uh, very rainy. That's why, yeah. you know, we, can't, we cannot just stick to only sunny days. When it's right. cloudy, uh, it's, uh, if you can pluck, you gotta pluck. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, next day, the teas are growing bigger, it's old. Yeah. It's uh, ma more mature. That's right. Do you yeah, call that old? No, we don't. Not really. Okay, no, okay. but it's a bit confusing. But yeah, like the you'll miss a you'll miss a round of buds. They'll actually be full open, and the next ones are on the way. Yes. Missed out. Yes. Right. Yes. And same with what you mentioned about the Tie Guanyin, right? If they uh, had a little bit rain or even a little bit cloudy in the morning, if they have some decent sun to dry yeah. those out, and it could be a good situation you rush out plug it because you mm -hmm. don't know mm -hmm. in the mountains it could rain in the afternoon oh yeah yeah if you don't like the weather wait 10 minutes it's going to change right right yeah. yeah so yeah very very cool yeah and you even hear people and uh, there are people say uh there's absolutely no plucking in the rainy days right uh, yes but do people pluck tea in rainy days also yes like oh, yeah. reality is one thing mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. yeah yeah we've definitely um definitely seen that not ideal, but you never know what some people it have. We're curious to a farmer's thinking is I plug, yes, it is raining for the last five days. If I don't plug this one, I'm total negative, right? Right. If I plug some, make some, even though it's a low quality tea, I sell that cheaper, right. there is some income. Cut my losses kind of That's thing. right. Yes. yes. Especially in the South China, they could you know rain for five days a week the total mm. miss out yeah and it's yeah. not uncommon right mm -hmm. it's, it's serious rain um, oh boy this is good i was a little bit hesitated when i realized we we're having shim pork because i didn't have a huge breakfast you know yeah so bram jumped in and i don't mm. see welcome bram i don't see any other uh other questions so i'm gonna rock right into the next section mm. uh bamboo wear for holding tea Tea is the cleanest spirit and born naturally. It should be picked carefully and no hurting the color or taste. So it needs a suitable tea set. Most parts of southern China are now producing bamboo and, it's, and it is easy and cheap to get. The bamboo basket ventilated. Leaf. Fresh tea leaves accumulate <laughs> in it in a short time with high temperature which will not cause heat deterioration. And the baskets are very light. 
Farmers can hold it with hands, shoulders, or heads. Although the tea has been moved from hand-picked tea, hand-picked, the current transition of mechanical harvesting, but in small scale, bamboo ware is still an indispensable tool for picking the tea for farmers. So this one was, um, I think, I think this is really hard to understand if I've never been in the tea field. Right. Um, again, you can get the gist, but it's pretty, it's pretty um, parable one. First tea set, right? I'm a, I'm a tea guy, even if I'm a tea head, this is a tea set, right? Oh. It's nothing to do with, uh, but, but you right. know, if you go and check out our translation at the end, it'll be up. Mm. We call that, uh, I call it a basket. It's not a tea set, it's a bamboo basket mm -hmm. for holding tea, right? Mm. Um, so that threw me off uh, right away. And then I realized, oh! Should be like a tea plucking set, or that might be easier. Yeah, or tea plucking tools, tools or yeah. uh, you know, something like that. So that kind of threw me off. Um, but then down in the para two here, it gets a little bit clear. Oh, as bamboo is cheap, it's easy to get. In mm -hmm, fact, mm -hmm. usually just chop it themselves and I'll never forget in Yunnan, I saw those guys working on the bamboo. Like mm, a, check out our Yunnan vlog. Oh, we have that in he, he captured because he was so mesmerized uh, by those. I'm telling work. you, it's really fascinating. They chop down a bamboo and then they, they make it into long, long strips. And then they just, boom, like 30 minutes, they've got a basket. <laughs> they go from a tree to a basket, 30 minutes. So when they say cheap and easy, easy to get and inexpensive, yeah, inexpensive, you need an axe. That's it and not axe, just a knife, but whatever. Mm. And really cool, but you gotta have the skills because you can really cut yourself on that stuff. Oh yeah, Sharp. oh yeah. Like, uh, but anyway, these guys were technicians, check out that video. <laughs> but anyway, um, so right, so it's easy to get. And then in the next little section too, it's quite lost to me. Um, it's ventilated, okay, ventilatedly. I get that it's ventilated. Fresh tea leaves accumulate in a short time within high temperature which will not cause heat deterioration. So this is really, I found that really tricky to understand, right? Yeah, I'm not sure what it means in English. I think what they're saying is, what my takeaway was, and again, mm -hmm. only because I've been there, is you can pluck tea on a hot day, because believe me, when the sun's out, even mm -hmm. in the spring, it's gonna be hot. Mm -hmm. But the bamboo is breathing, you're not gonna, the tea's not gonna wilt too badly in there. I think that's what they're saying, but it was pretty hard to, to, to get that out of there. You get the gist of it for yeah. sure. Okay. That's in general that means, but it's irrelevant from the weather itself. As you mm. have a pile ah. of a fresh leaf, it's gonna generate heat. Right, right. And that would also uh, accelerate deteriorate. Right. Their oxidation. Yes. Yeah. Oxidation. Yeah. 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 So that's what that means. So uh, like it, the bamboo, it's breathable. Right, there right. are holes in it and stuff. Got it. You put it in a plastic bucket you're definitely going to get with like really, um, it's going to go nasty. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, and, gotcha. Okay. And you can see in the tea factory, if you pay attention to details, especially those uh, uh, big basket uh, there, you you will notice difference in say the grid count, thread count or something. Oh. Some are bigger, some are small. Right, the, those weave, are, the weave. The how weave, tightly right. woven they are. Yes. The loose weave versus tight weave. Yeah, they use a different, uh, even though you just uh, glance at this, it's oh. all bamboo basket. You don't think too much. You think, oh, just a bamboo basket, grab this, that, different. They will, if you help out, they will tell you, hey, not this one, that one. And right. I was like, why? And, and they are actually really different. And of course, they use the thickness, the how much leaf put to regulate those detail things. I'll definitely be paying more attention next time yeah. to see that. That is so interesting. Yeah. So, um, and then they talk a little bit about, uh, of it's course, the practical aspects are pretty easy to understand. You can carry it and it's not going to break your back. Um, those leaves get heavy, uh, believe me. Um, but, and then um, be, even though there's more mechanical harvesting, um, it's still very important for uh, the smaller scale farmers. Mm -hmm. So pretty, pretty straight up. Yeah. I see a little bit of, um, a little bit of questions. So let's go over here and see what's going on in, in the, the chat board. Mm -hmm. Tea picking tea on the weather section was easy to understand, even for me as a novice. Oh, That's excellent. Great. Good to know. Thanks for the feedback. Yeah, right? yeah. That, those are really helpful yeah, too. Yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys think in terms, uh, first, of course, if I missed something that you found hard to understand, definitely. But if you think uh, 
if, if it was pretty easy, let us know. That's mm -hmm. always good. Mm -hmm. um, JS, got my surge protector. Whew. Oh, in case, because lightning and stuff yes, in the yes. area, maybe. Haro, couldn't agree more about the bamboo wheat wear. I just recently discovered an antique bamboo lidded basket in my house. Huh? Oh, And wow. I started using it to store my bing cha. Oh, nice. Great storage great. area. You yeah. get some good breathing and, uh, and uh, perfect. And it's dark. Mm. Hate your holiday. I agree on that one. Perfect. Uh, Josh says, aside from being a beautiful Chinese antique, breathability does wonders for my Puar collection. Yes. Cakes increase so much flavor. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And the best part is the medium me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely going to be looking in the factories. I want to see those. Uh, there's often like a whole wall of those. If they're not in use, you see tons of those things. But mm -hmm. I, I never paid mm -hmm. attention to the that that minor detail. But you got probably it corrected before. So it oh, made yeah. you realize yeah. that. Mm. A lot mm. of little things that you don't, you just think you can just copy what they were doing and but you got corrected because you were not choosing the same the right tool or yeah, something like that. You don't know like the that. criteria, right? Yeah, or you think mm -hmm. I make a leaf pile but I make too thick or too thin. None yeah, of those yeah. are working. Or turning it. I remember trying to turn the leaf like yeah, yeah. those guys just oh, do -do, and they're done. So I go do -do, and they're like, no, no, you didn't get the bottom ones up and yes, like they're really, yes. they're paying attention yeah. to all kinds of stuff. That's mastery versus novice. You mm -hmm. know? All right, so okay. let's move into Next the one. techniques of picking tea. Right. How am I doing with the uh, highlighting? Pretty good? Very good. Okay, and good, I good. love how you straighten it. So I really look forward when you make a low mark. And I noticed last time I was a little low in a drop. Yeah, yeah. Since yeah. Since <laughs> I love that. Oh, gosh. <laughs> the lower... Yeah. My life is making me so hungry. The lao main ripe is making me hungry. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're having shampoo, so we totally know what you mean in terms of uh, getting hungry from drinking tea, right? We're going to be having some uh, lunch after this. Mm. All right. So techniques of picking tea. In addition to stressing the tea sets, bamboo baskets, remember, picking fresh tea <laughs> also focus on techniques. The basic methods are pinch picking, lift hand picking, and double handed picking, etc. Pinch picking. I'm going to go through all of these uh, techniques and then we'll come back. It's a bit of a longer section, but it's a uh, technique. It's a little bit fun. So we're getting into uh, plucking techniques so you guys can get summer jobs now. Just kidding. Ha. <laughs> Pinch picking. It is also called break picking. The standard picking method for tender tea leaves includes holding the top, quote unquote, and putting head up, quote unquote, etc. Okie dokie. Chinese section. Lifting hand picking. The standard picking method. Palm down and clamp the fish shaped leaf with thumb and forefinger. Gently lift upward and let the bud fall into palm. Most of the green tea and black tea are picked in this way. Double handed picking. If the tea bush has ideal crown and its picking surface is smooth, it can be picked in this way, which can increase efficiency by 50 percent to 100 percent. Experienced tea picking man prefers this method. <laughs> picking with cutting. People in the border region are used to drinking the pressed tea, which also called border tea. Since the raw material are rough, people use tools like small iron blade, sickle, or picking pliers to pick. Picking tea leaves quickly to avoid new treetop spouts, treetops spout being influenced by the broken branches. While picking, you should not only use one hand. You may hurt the integrity of the buds. You should remember that tea leaves cannot be pressed in the basket and should be put in the shady place. While being piled, they cannot be pressed. I think that's about it. I gotta scroll a bit. Yes, I'm gonna read note one too. Note one, fish-shaped leaf means while the winter buds are at the beginning of sprouting but have not been come out in spring the shape of this period just like fish all right so i'm going to go back up to the beginning mm -hmm. bit of a longer section so part one uh pretty okay once we figured out the tea set so i kind of muttered that in the beginning that's those bamboo baskets again it's right. not a brewing set um 
Um, it's basically saying there's a few typical methods and then it's going into them in detail. So I think that's fine. Let's dive into them. Um, this looks a little bit as mantis like flower. Mm -hmm. Like really gentle. So a little story for you guys. I love Osman. We have dried Osmanthus flour, and we make. She makes this fermented rice, rice. Uh, drink slash treat, sweet fermented rice. And uh, I now make homemade yuanzu, uh, homemade xiao yuanzu, which is like little uh, glutinous rice balls. So you yeah. put the Osmanthus flour in that, and it's just divine with a little bit of. But you don't need rock sugar if you have the rice. Right. Anyway, it's so good. So now I have to detect that. Just the smell. When I drink it, I don't feel that. <laughs> the slightest hint, but it's not as sweet as that one. No. That one's really sweet. This is more like a, like um, the the uh, dry the pure fragrance without the uh, the sweet freshness. You know, it's like it's dried more. Mm. Mm. And I still love that rich. Oh, it's in the most real better. Mm -hmm. Almost like a plum brandy though, uh, like that dry plum flavor. And of course the malt feel is just luscious. I just like how soupy the texture mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. mm. Alright, so plucking techniques guys. This is so that you can... Oh, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. This is good for your uh, Chinese summer job. Learn how to pluck. <laughs> Spring no, but, job. but it's good. So this is, I'm kind of tongue in cheek making a joke, but right. again, as they mentioned in the beginning, it's good to understand these plucking techniques because when you're looking at your leaf, it, give you, it gives you some tools to understand uh, a bit more about uh, the uh, quality of the pluck. I think plucking is not very important for tea drinker. It's just, uh, sorry. No, it's okay. I just, I... Because it's a very first, it's a, uh, um, a little bit hard to express in English. Mm -hmm. The the plucking probably is not very hard, but I think first is, you know, plugging, not everybody. A is little bit too much detail, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it's not very important. Basically, uh, you know, you pinch it, you pinch the leaf up, you don't use the nails. That's the key no-no. In plucking, but uh, other than that, in terms of that? the pinching, no fingernails. No fingernails, but it's hard. It is I hard. I mean, uh, pinch it or the second one, what lifting is similar. Because really similar, yeah. It's really similar because you all use that uh, snap of force yeah. by your wrist, thumb and index finger, mm -hmm. and and one's and pulling this way and one's kind of more rotate. Yes, rotating. more rotate mm -hmm. way. Uh, you know, just. If you ever go to a tea field and uh, in China, you know not to use the nails because mm. how it plucks it's right. a, uh, I think same with a lot of veggies. So why is it easier to use hand to rip it rather than use knife because that chops the break mm. unnaturally with the fibers and stuff. Right, right. Anyways, um, and uh, some use knives or other tools to help pluck. It's just different ways of plucking. Yeah, mm. a couple of things though that I guess that right. I found weird was holding the top and putting head up. Like those are really, uh, I right. guess those are really specific. They're again they're in quotes. Holding the top and putting it, it's actually in quotes because it was a uh, Chinese uh, tea terms, you know, mm. tuo tuo ding and uh, liao tou. Both oh. are tea like specific tea terms. Uh, like if you don't know that uh, you don't know too much, so you wouldn't know what exactly that it means. Uh, in common language, it basically thumb and index finger hold the Hold bud. the bud. Yeah. The tricky mm -hmm. part is... Uh, snapping it. Snapping it. I got in it, trouble a lot because my snap wasn't good. Like you got to have a really fast... Imagine, as, you're, as we go on, right, they're going to tell you what they've already said. You've got to be gentle. The thing is, if you don't snap in the somehow right you could uh, mm. break the new one attach about a lot of the old leaves all comes off well all you need is the top yeah. one so that uh, is uh, quite skillful when I just yeah. started I often tear the old one which is not desired because that's where they have new shoot right that's what it means uh, in the text that says uh, plucking the leaves quickly avoiding the new new sprouts being influenced it means uh, like 
Yes. You know, you don't this is really key, the... right? Because if you don't do it right, you're damaging your next flush, if you that's want to right. use that term. Yeah. Or the next set of sprouts to come out. Because yeah. it took me a while to actually, that's some, a little bit interesting to talk to. Also, I don't know if it's because I'm Canadian or because I'm not a gardener. But it took I think me a gardener l- will really help to understand a right? lot of it. I think it's so. a plant. Plant is a plant. Yeah, and I didn't realize though how, um, mm-hmm. like the speed at which, like why is spring tea good? Because the buds form slowly. It's not so hot. When you get into the summer in these regions, it's possible it's a bud in the morning and by late mid-afternoon, that's not a bud anymore. That's yeah. a full leaf. Yeah. It's incredible, like I'm not a gardener, so I didn't realize how fast that moves. So that's also good to know that why these times are sensitive and mm. why they're rushing out as soon as, the, as when, once the tea is dry enough, get that plucked up. Yeah. Mm. And um, I think that was about it. Let me check here. Um, yeah, it's basically a very technical and some of the harder tea, they're gonna use a knife to help pluck that. Mm-hmm. Again, very And now they're, they're also machines and stuff to pluck, but just multiple plucking ways. Oh, there was another one. Mm-hmm. You should not you use only one hand. This was, again, it's probably a little bit too detailed, mm-hmm. or you may hurt the integrity of the buds. It's uh, in uh, the Chinese. It, oh, see. Oh, it works. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fun. <laughs> uh, it's not a do not use one hand. It's a specific way of a, it's a verb. You know, it means a, uh, Mm, how should I say? It? Like a grab the, uh, like how I do my hair like this. <laughs> I don't know how to say that in English. Ponytail. Yeah, but you see the movement of my hand. This oh, is right. like, how do you oh, say and that? And you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. You don't want to grab oh, the branches and right. tear it, tear the right, leaves off right. like that. Right. Okay. You only want the bad, the end. Right. Right. Did I explain that? How would you call this movement? Uh, just yeah, just don't grab a bunch of branches. We don't this, this move uh, yeah, grabbing s- and just sliding. Oh yeah, grabbing you, and sliding. Right. <laughs> in know. the final translation, initially <laughs> you used the word stroke, and I replaced mm. it. So check the translation to see what my final choice was. But I think I just used I avoid mm. that term. We don't have a good term for that. So I said avoid uh, avoid um, damaging or disrupting or mm. something Maybe like that. Maybe you guys can tell help yeah, us yeah, and throw tell us me a ball. Wait. Which word I should use? Mm. Mm. Okay, I think that's the fish mouth is interesting. I think we see that sometimes Remember, in our in our gaiwan, so that might be interesting for them. No, um, the, the one of our live video we brew a by Hao Yingzhen, and I left a leaf to ask people, what do you think of the plucking plucking standard? Some people say oh, one right, leaf, right, one bud, and several right. leaves. Uh, fish shape uh, is a, a Chinese metaphor way of calling them because they look like leaf. But yu ye is a special, it's a chi- uh, tea term, means the mini leaf on the bottom of the buds from the last winter. Mm. So it's a sign of early plot. Right. So uh, if you're interested, I explain a little bit more on with the tea leaves. So you will be see that in one of the live sessions so we brew right. the Bai Hao Yingzhen, top grade Bai Hao Yingzhen. Yeah, I'll try and dig up the link. Mm. Awesome. Let's go to the questions. I think there was some comments during this. Oh, cool. Um, oh, there we go. So Josh says, I have also seen a number of videos on tea production and I was always dumbfounded about the amount of craftsmanship that must have gone into making those gargantuan bamboo drums. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. I feel, and now H.A. Holiday says, I feel like the names of the picking techniques need to be stated in Chinese. Mm. Mm, probably, yeah. We change them as well in the final translation just to uh, double handed plucking, you know, lift, lift plucking, you know, mm. those kind of things. But I think you're right. They're probably more beautiful in Chinese. And Josh says, I think regardless of the language barrier of the translation, perhaps this section may stay impenetrable without a diagram or visual. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, especially when it comes to, one is a subtle, de- it's like a very subtle hand movement. Yeah. One of them is trying to, and describing that in a book is, like you say, almost not worth it. Just do it. Yeah, We're on video. It's a, just this do it. is a really... It's this versus this. Right, right. That's why we do a video, because uh, otherwise it's just that. But mm-hmm. it's a really mini section of touch on that um, 
Many oh, people no. don't know that. What? I'm reading ahead. Heisha Holiday, remember she had the Osmanthus tree, but she sold right. the house a few weeks back. Oh. Uh, okay. I hope you can find another source of Osmanthus. It's beautiful in autumn. Mm. And Josh says, I'm a little confused. I'm a little confused is what I'm getting at. Oh. Oh. oh, yeah, that's fine. It was, like Jen said, though, not super critical for so uh, I don't think drinker. a blocking is mm. very important for people. And like if how to plug yeah, you and if you're I, the other thing is if you're really into it and you're so into it you're going to go to a farm they're going to show you yeah because yeah. everybody has their own yes. little it's minor. something you just have to do it and you learn it in yeah. one second yeah but then you do ten thousand hours to get good at it mm. <laughs> yeah tea terms should be left in opinion in my opinion mm. in my opinion <laughs> opinion <laughs> sorry that's Omo. A, i'm old yeah, in my opinion, opinion, get it? It's a really bad pun, really bad. Sorry, everybody in YouTube world who had to endure that pun. <laughs> Before I get in trouble, next section. Okay. Quality of tea, qualities of tea. The quality of tea is determined by places. Book of Tea believes that the tea grown in the wild is better than in the gardens. Purple tea is better than green. Shoots are better than buds. Curly leaves are better than the smooth. The quality of tea is also determined by seasons. Grown in spring, the leaves are dark green, fat and soft, sufficient water. Grown in summer, the leaves are small but hard. In autumn, the quality is just between the two above. When it goes to the late autumn or early winter, the leaves are little and easy to harden. When they are made into tea soup, the color and taste are a little bit lighter. As a result, they are not easy to be top grade. I think that's the end of that section. I'm just going to yeah. peek down. There we go. Yeah. Ooh, diagrams next. Woohoo! <laughs> okay. Okay. Understandable to you? Uh, places. The quality of tea is determined by places. Like, uh, yeah, that was a little bit of a weird choice of words, but uh, they go on to explain that it's. Uh, wild versus garden is the place the other things aren't really related to place purple and green right. shoots and buds curly leaf but basically kind of like some tea is better than other tea i think um is what i got from para one not too bad right 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 my i, think. Mm, I just want to point it out a little bit like the the paragraph one most of that is a quote from uh -huh. again classic of tea the of classic course. of tea and uh, so this is a very famous quote that almost like when you talk to people about tea or stuff, a lot of times they quote that, like Chinese, of course. Right. Um, but I just want to mention, again, this is an ancient book from 1200 years ago to mm. today's world. We can't, even though the meaning or the words are understandable, there's no hidden meaning of those characters. But the, the connotation of that is different. So they say wild is better than garden. But the wild at that time, vis-a-vis -vis the garden at that time, compared to nowadays, our wild and garden is totally different story. Right, right. You know, they're- Because the way they cultivate it was quite different, right? They don't do much. Right. They do cultivation, but it's not like what we're thinking. Like uh, how nowadays we call wild is almost like their garden. Their mm. garden is just uh, this bill, this... This area has some tea plants. Yeah, I'm pretty gonna... intensive tea plants, but that intensive has nothing to do with the industrial intensive, like a... Like the pictures we see with the rows yeah, and rows yeah, of only a, tea. Totally they didn't different. Have that. Right. And the wild, that wild is uh, scattered on the field, which means mm. uh, one bush every couple of steps uh, to the next one mixing with the other bushes. Mm. Those are true wild. How often do you see market selling that very extreme, extreme rare mm. nowadays? So just to say their wild and their gardening means way more wild than what we know as a wild right. or garden nowadays. Right. right. That's a good, good distinction. Okay. Yeah. Right. Reminds me of the, um, when we went, when the guy took us to that, those ancient, uh, Banyan, um, Shui Xian, mm, mm. you know, that's their, that's their, um, that's their garden. Yes, that's right. But was on the way, you see there's a little tea tree scattered here or that. Yes. Right? When we walk there. So right, that's right. the kind of concept is quite different. 
and also like a purple is better than green mm. like nowadays we have more uh, like uh, this is the quote right pretty right. much the whole para right and like a purple tea now you have tea that this cultivar itself generates purple tea but oh, that's yeah, yeah. not what this quote no. is talking about is uh, uh, that uh, it kind of implies a super er implicates a super early tea bud and also it's that uh, kind of a soil also have a great effect mm. on does the tea plant generating this kind of a color and it disappears it doesn't stay like that color as the season early. progresses right yes, yes and, and it's almost just a it's not like what we would call purple it's a mm, deep mm, green deep. pushing the purple yes. out of the green yes right mm. yes mm. um right so that's um Guju Zasun, right? That's where he got, that's what the name is, yes. has purple in it, based yeah. on his desire. Because that's his desire. time, mm. that's the cultivar he noticed generally most of that bamboo right. and dark color. Right on. So then in the second bit, um, the quality of the tea is determined by seasons. Um, and then we have spring. Okay, pretty easy to understand, right? Mm -hmm. Grown in spring, the leaves are like pretty much mm -hmm. awesome. Um, summer they're small and hard that might be um hard is a bit of a weird way to imagine a leaf in western terms small i think mm. i'm a little surprised they're stiff? small too was stiff stiff maybe yeah 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 maybe yeah. stiff or more brittle less supple right right why is that small is that your question yeah yeah i'm surprised it's stressful weather oh gotcha. uh, i mean this session what this session uh did about seasons, about stuff. I really feel like uh, uh, doing some gardening, get familiar with uh, the plant, would really help understand. Right. Right. It's not a you know factory made thing that is identical. They always like that, but different weather, different humidity, different right. rain. They right. they can look quite different, even though the same plant. Right. And then the autumn tells us, okay, it's in between, not so small and hard, but also not as luscious and juicy, mm -hmm. sort of watery, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and then um, late autumn winter again that word harden I felt like that could be a stumbling block again if you don't are uh, easy to harden again I, I think, think it's harder the, is the stiffness right. of more fibrous right and we talked about that a little bit in earlier chapters too it just means that when you process it it's gonna it's not gonna take to rolling or shaping very well it's mm -hmm. gonna bounce back mm -hmm. um, what is it uh, Huang Pian style Yes, mm, yes. Right. And different content in the leaves which will affect the quality of the right, tea. Right, right. The not as rich with those juicy chemicals, amino acids, uh, flavonoids, yes. etc. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so that's what this paragraph is about. Mm -hmm. And like they say, uh, if it's a hard season, you're going to have a lot of trouble to generate a real top grade, a real top grade tea. My highlighting was awful. There we go. Um, let's go to the chat board and see if there's some questions. Mm -hmm. um, a little confused, but I'm getting at We were there. Uh, oh, Brandon, appreciate my bad pun of opinion in, in her opinion. <laughs> I still cannot stop it. Um, <laughs> anyway, Josh says, I'm getting kind of the usual hierarchy of spring, autumn, summer tea from this. Yes. Right, yeah, yeah. And that's. Uh, rough, this, very this, rough, right? Like a, yeah, it's a rough idea. Everything is in the high level, and uh, later mm. on, when we dive into specific teas and stuff like that, it's they have its own, you know, what the tea. Perfect I timing. often say mm. those things are really oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, earthquake, earthquake. <laughs> are really rough high level, but uh, once you dive in, there's more stuff there. Right. Like Bai Hao Wulong is a summer tea. The best that comes from the summer. Ah, interesting. Right, so the tea different That's the bug bitten? Am I mixed up? Yes. No, it is, right? Yes, it's yeah. bug bitten. Oh, bug. Bug. Oh, bug. Bug okay. bitten. Okay, yeah. right, 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 yes. And they need that because their bugs aren't so prolific in the spring. Something like that. I remember hearing about that. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> um, and, yes, th so again, those hierarchies are good. Um, Kind of guideline, but mm. not to be just mm. like preaching Ming is the best yeah. green tea. Like there's no simple not, tech just to say yeah. that is yeah. absolutely not. You still have to taste them. You know, summer, spring could be awful weather, full of rain. It, it could generate not so good tea. While autumn, in a lot of places, have beautiful suns while getting better taste too. But mm. just 
Yeah. Really rough guy. Very rough, yeah. And then H.A. Holiday says, not talking about wild purple tea at all. Um, and that's a great question because uh, it is more something we're talking about nowadays. You see that popping up in the market. And she mentioned that it was like Talonesis. I remember, uh, I think... I think David Campbell wrote a bit about this cultivar, mm, mm, um, and it's not referring to that at all. No, it's um, but you will see at least in China, you will see people who sell those things and quote it. Oh, this is what Lu Yu think is the best. Right, that's absolutely not what it is. Yeah, uh, what Lu Yu says is this condition of nor not normal, but those more traditional style tea, mm. but happens in this. Yeah. Yeah, mm. it's the shade of green that they push. Yeah, it it's was, so deep, right, and purple. Yes, yes, and it's really related to the season, season. Mm. to the uh, soil and stuff. Yeah, so watch it's out for that. The, the, I wanted to point that out. It's right, a, right. I'm really glad you asked that, H.R. Holiday, because you do see people exploit that, Lou, you mentioned purple, vis-a-vis -vis these purple tea, and they're, they're tough to make good tea with, and I'm being generous. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, oh, we got a picture, guys. We're coming up to the diagram. If you like mm -hmm. pictures, you're in luck. <laughs> the specification of fresh leaf. We got a picture of a tea shoot here. All right, so this is going to be a little less read and more just uh, there is some reading coming up. But So let's just go through the sketch. Sketch mm -hmm. map of location for plucking. So you've mm -hmm. got your bud, one leaf bud, one two leaf bud, one three leaf bud, one four leaf bud, one five leaf bud. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it. So I'm going to go and read about these and then I'll come back to the picture because it's more fun to look at a picture. Mm -hmm. So there are bud, one leaf bud, one two leaf bud, one three leaf bud and everything I just said. Mm -hmm. And then they talk about each. One leaf bud, it is said that the unmarried woman cut this bud with a pair of golden scissors as tea for royals. One leaf bud is like the mouth of a sparrow at the moment when it unfolds. One two-leaf bud, which is the best tea in the market now, according to the degree of unfolding, it is divided into the following types. The least unfolding leaf, which refers to the tender branch, has been ripe, and the fresh tea, the fresh leaf comes out. The little unfolding leaf, which refers to the first leaf's area, is half of the second one, Half unfolding leaf, which refers to the first leaf, is two thirds of the second one. The big unfolding leaf refers to the first leaf, is as large as the second one. The symmetrical leaf refers to the fresh leaves with staying buds and short distance between parts. The shape of the two leaves is symmetrical and it is abnormal new sprout. Rarely there exists a symmetrical with three leaves. Okay. One three leaf bud. Currently, it is the common fair quality tea. And finally, one four leaf bud refers to the picking of rough tea. All right, so before I scroll back up, because I do want to get back to the picture because it's way more fun to be there. The um, first thing I guess is the, um, actually I will go back up if I can remember the direction, here we go. Is the way they say one leaf bud, it took me a while to straighten out, but they mean uh, bud, um, one leaf, one bud. Mm. Um, that kind of Chinglish kind of settled in the tea area when people talk about leaf and bud, right? One bud, one leaf, one bud, two leaf. Is that yes, something? Yes, yeah. Like so I think that's how I would. Because yeah, that's, that was the that's the Chinese direct translation. Yeah, and I, but it's not just a direct translation. Like a, a it also lot, makes sense in English? hundred percent. And oh. a lot of Chinese grammar, like a lot of languages you learn, you've got to really move the words around and jiggle them to make them make sense. For French and English, it's all often flip. Right. And in this one, you guys say one leaf, one leaf, one bud. That's mm -hmm. what we would say too. Okay. One leaf, uh, two leaf, one bud. Three leaf, one bud. It's always one bud. But we still say one bud. Always say one bud. One leaf, one bud. Bud first and then leaf. Uh, one bud, one leaf. Yeah. One, one bud, two, two leaf. leaf. Mm. You yeah. can do either. I guess it all works. Anyway, mm. this section, as you can see from the book, is more like the additional reading section, but I found that people might be interested mm. just to point out uh, uh, there is a picture. That's the tea. Yeah, raise your hand if you love pictures. <laughs> and uh, mm, again, very, very extremely, like a grocery store veggie. 
like a super unified, beautiful right, looking, right. you know, really a, the, the, the model of a mm -hmm. leaf. When you go to the field, you will see more dynamics of it. Oh, yeah. This is the ideal situation. So right. um, that's what the looks of it. Mm. Pretty understandable. I think so. Yeah, the one um, leaf open. Yeah. So I think the in the notes. What did I say? I found the um, in terms of explaining one bud one leaf. They broke that down into several different types of one bud one leaf, right? And I found one that one bud two leaf. You mean? Uh, one bud two leaf. Yes. Sorry. Right. That part I think is a little bit too much for um, people who are just getting into tea. Right. Why? Because it's talking about these two leaves, the size of the two leaves, so what's the situation. So what are these parts talking about is, like when we look at the... Just so let me organize what I'm about. No, yeah, yeah. So what I mean is like um, the... Here is the thing. Uh, a lot of times when I drink tea and stuff with people, I can uh, tell the plucking seasons and what's the rough time, what's the climate situation at that time when the tea pluck is because you can look at the leaf and know, mm. right? And this about this helps you understand when it's plucked. Right. So to know the plant, uh, uh, the for example, we talk about internal how far it is, and those indicates the time when it's plucked, right? Inter, and internode? Internode, sorry. Right, no, that's okay. Right. I want to show them what that means because that might not be right. obvious. Yeah. So basically the distance between the here and here, correct yes. me if I'm wrong. Yes. Right, so yes. that tells you something about how fast the plant's growing, yeah. which What's the situation? the season. When yeah. is the season? We're mm. not even just season, the time, mm. Mm. you know, and uh, the, client, the, the weather around that time. Right. And same with the leaf the size, the size, the ratio, the look of it, like by looking at it, you kind of roughly have an idea right, right. when this tea is plucked. So with, you know, and also the ratio between leaf and bud and leaves and stuff, those all indicate a mm, different mm. situation because plants react to the weather, like right, live. Of course, yes. Right? So that's how you know. But for people who are drinking tea, um, it's, uh, it's a lot to know. Sure. I think it's also a lot for us to get into, even though we have a live session. Mm. This is something that's easier to dive into more in our um, our in-person sessions that we do sometimes, where we can pull the leaf we, out. When we do day stings and brew mm. leaves, we mm. will show people what this means and what is this. And, yeah. it, and because you really need to be talking about a pretty specific tea, yeah. it can't be so generalized because we're getting into the yeah. down and dirty details here. Yeah, and that's why this is additional reading section. Right, but still <laughs> super fun to look at mm -hmm. the picture and see mm -hmm. what's going on. Mm -hmm. And, and there are uh, a lot of like Chinese tea terms like xiao kai mian, zhong kai mian, mm. da kai mian. Which we kept in the finished translation that'll right. be up on the site after because yes. again, it's a little bit more, um, I think... A little bit overly professional, I think, for a lot of just a regular tea drinker. Right, but nice to keep the opinion. Yes. Because it doesn't translate well, just like the tea names. And it's so specific to tea, it, it works mm -hmm. in the regular opinion. Mm -hmm. It will show how professional you are if you talk to a Chinese tea. Oh, yeah. Oh, Over yeah. Like that. All right, let's check out the, uh, the comments and, um, okay. and see what's going on. Yeah, not talking. Okay, just a couple. Mm -hmm. Going to run, hate a holiday, watch the rest later. Yeah, sure thing. Have a good day. I hope we didn't miss you, but probably did. Sorry about that. <laughs> and Josh says, yeah, I've heard of one leaf, one bud, two leaves, two buds. Right, right on. Yeah. So um, that is uh, that wraps up this session. Mm -hmm. um, I, if you guys are finding this uh, interesting, please give us a thumbs up and let us know in the comments. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't forget to check out the translation on the website yes, too. Yes, we'll post the um, link shortly. Yep, we'll have that link up soon. And um, I think that's it, I'm gonna wrap up. So don't forget to, uh, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, I wanted to say that uh, there's some really cool coming up next week. We're gonna wrap up section one next week and mm, then I was peeking soon. ahead <laughs> into part two of the book Right. And we get into a lot of uh, appreciating tea, mm. tasting, aroma, and stuff like that. So it's coming up. 
Um, yes, I really look forward to that because a lot yeah. of things are lost in the West. They're talking about appreciating tea. Yes, yes. And this will make our like a tea tasting sessions like a lot easier if people all know mm. a little bit basics. Yeah, yeah absolutely, hundred mm. percent. So uh, be sure to subscribe. Uh, hit the thumbs up if you found this uh, the information we're sharing mm -hmm. useful. And share with your tea friends if you really like what we're doing. And until next time, keep steeping. Keep steeping.